I kind of lost control of my mind and like was having panic attacks so bad that I was like hallucinating. So there was a lot to it. And I think that that being at the same time as like the world shutting down, like there was just a lot of big changes. Hey besties, welcome back to another episode of I Missed Me. My name is Mafian Suris. I am your host and I am so happy and so grateful that you're here. Today's episode is very <laughs> random. <laughs> yes, indeed. And exciting because I have Sierra with me here. She, so I rented out a studio in LA and she is helping me with the audio. And I was supposed to have a guest and she canceled. And I'm like, do you just want to hop on and, you know? And I'm like, sure. Let's yeah, just we do were it. just having a conversation of like the amount of things she's done. And I'm like, do you just want to like jump in the podcast and tell everybody about yourself which is I feel like super cool because there's a lot of people and I've always had like the most admiration for people that are behind the scenes yeah of everything like my dad he has his like marketing events mm -hmm. and my favorite people are always the ones that are like behind the stage like yeah. working with the lights and audio and like because people don't see that so they yeah. like never acknowledge them or like even are grateful for them and it's like they're the most important people yeah, like this so, would not be happening yeah literally this no. would not be happening so <clears throat> all of today's episodes would not be happening if it wasn't for you so thanks welcome to i missed me thanks <laughs> i'm so excited to be here we were talking about like relationships and stuff like between episodes and I'm like, yes. do you have a toxic like relationship story that you could like hop on and tell? And you were like, yes. And I'm like, okay, don't tell me anything about it. And yeah. I'll invite you to the episode, to the podcast and we can talk about it. So welcome. Thanks. <laughs> what uh, story do you have for us today? Oh my God. <laughs> I'm like, okay, first of all, if you're watching this. He's probably not. But if you are, because he is insane. <laughs> Chad, I'll call you by your name. <laughs> oh, which is okay. so embarrassing. Names and everything. Like, yeah. why would I even go for? Oh God, like that should be a red flag in itself. No offense Chad to is future Chads a... or Chads out there. But or offense. Or offense. <laughs> Full offense, actually. Um, leave me alone. <laughs> anyway, so no, because he's still hitting up. That's crazy. Just, I mean, okay. The thing is, I haven't talked to him since 2020. Four years. Yeah. And then he added me yesterday on something. And I was like, what are you what doing? Are doing? Um, <clears throat> anyway, so yeah, the deal with this man. When when does everything start? Mm, um, <laughs> this is so crazy. Right before COVID started. So 2019? 2020. But like... I think the world shut down March 13th, so... It was that day. Yeah. It was, like, March 13th, like, yeah. the world stopped. It was, like, literally. Oh, okay, here we go. So, I would say probably, like, February, mid-February, we met. Um, we met in Big Bear, and he was a friend of a friend, and... How do you meet? So, my, like, childhood best friend is, like, a really, really good snowboarder, um... And I was with my best friend who we go, you know, snowboarding together and she, him and I were together and it was his friend that came along to barbecue at our cabin. Mm. And he was really funny. I didn't think he was cute at all in the beginning. <laughs> it's always like that. But like he had it's a good personality. Like yeah. And so I was like, oh yeah, cool. And I didn't even think anything of it either. Like I was just like, like I never thought. Ew, like what? Like mm -hmm. I uh, uh, no thank you. Um <laughs> and yeah, I don't know. We like vibed as corny and ridiculous as that sounds. And then we kind of just like got into it quick. And what I really did like about him, and I was like, oh, he's a good guy, is like the first night we like went out drinking at the bars and stuff, and we went back and um I was like, I'm not like gonna sleep with you. Like that's like not my thing. I'm not mm -hmm. like that type of girl. Mm -hmm. And he was like, Okay, no worries. And I was like I struck gold. Thank you like, for the bare minimum. Yeah, thank you so much for not making me sleep with, with you. you. Like, that is so nice. <laughs> um, but yeah, anyway, fast forward. He lived in Big Bear. He was like a, I don't know, loser. <laughs> but not that people that live in Big Bear are losers. I just hate him. Um, but anyway, so yeah, he was like, let me drive down to like Orange County and take you on a date. And I was like, okay, sure. And so he did that. And then... COVID hit. Okay, so <laughs> when he says, 
let me take you on a date had he shown like any red flags before like taking on a date or everything was like just super nice of him he was like consistent yeah didn't show any inconsistency Mm -hmm. he like picked you up yeah opened the car door for you all of that or really yeah like really good energy okay um and also like can't do him dirty in this way he is a very funny guy like he's a very funny entertaining person to be around um so i was like oh this is good energy like he's like nice like you know like funny Mm. opens my door takes Mm. me to dinner um which is again the bare minimum but like you know yeah um good first impression definitely and then we went on our date and then fast forward maybe a little bit I don't remember he was at my house and at the time I had moved back in with my mom um so he was there and then the world shut down and he just what he stayed (gasps) yes and I was like oh my god this is crazy like it was nice that like to have like somebody to go of course um and you weren't dating No, we weren't boyfriend and girlfriend. And, like, mind you, he did buy, like, groceries, like, for the house. Like, Uh, $500 or whatever. Like, uh, the panic uh, buy. (laughs) I know. Not you, like, same uh, thing for him. Um, (laughs) But, yeah. Then one night he was like, oh, like, I want to get you, like, a ring light for your endeavors. And I was like, okay. And he's like, here you go. Like, I'm going to go take a shower. Like, you pick it out on my phone. And I was like, okay. And, like, while I was on his phone, he, like got a text from this girl like when are you gonna come eat this cat emoji and I was like wait a minute like why did it take me a second (laughs) no I literally was like wait like I'm like wait did he grocery shop for her too that's what I'm saying no it was so like huh like out of left field I was like how first of all how because like the world is shut down and we are basically living together and you don't leave so how do you even have the like what so i'm like let me check on that one really quick and (gasps) yeah there was like news and all this stuff it took me a second i was like hmm i was eat what (laughs) no literally i was like flabbergasted and then he got out of the shower and i was like i don't need a fucking ring light from you i don't want anything get your stuff and go like just go And what'd you find on the chat? Like everything. Oh, there was just like nudes. Like, I don't just a lot of like lying to me. When? Um, I mean, the thing is, this was so new. But like, I was just like, I don't have any room. Like it happened after he walked into your house. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, yeah. And then he somehow... Like, I've never met a manipulator in my life like this. I've never been manipulated like this. Somehow convinced me, like, no, it's fine. And I was like, okay, whatever. So I let him back. And then it was with the ex asking, oh, who is this? When he posts me on his story. Oh, that's just the bartender. No, it's not. And then him, he texted his ex holding up, like, $500 to a door saying, like, like, basically, I'm, like, trying to pay you to fuck me right now. (gasps) While he was staying at my house, he drove all the way up to Big Bear to the house that they lived together. Didn't know that either. And was trying to pay her $500 to fuck him one last time. <gasps> Sent her nudes of me that I didn't know. Of you? Wait, hold on. Hold yeah. On. No, no. Like this, like this man Wait, is. What is going on? Like pictures of me. I didn't even know that were taken were sent to her that were sent to me from her. And I was like, what the fuck is going on? Um, I was paying for his, like, PlayStation. Wait, I have so many questions. <laughs> Wait, hold on. No, this is, like, so, the messiest situation I have ever been in. This is going to be the favorite episode of a lot of people. <laughs> it's so crazy. Wait, I'm like, so at this point, was he still living at your house? Yeah. Like, this was still COVID. Yeah. He was still living at your house. This all happened like so fast and you were so manipulated that you just couldn't like bring yourself to kick him out or Um, you just couldn't kick him out or like what was going on yeah so I think the first time that it happened I was like the first girl that was like yeah I was like okay you know what like we're not boyfriend and girlfriend 
I do think it's a little disrespectful just because of the circumstances. Like you're living at my house. Like, what are you yeah. doing? Yeah. And like, we're obviously interested in each other. We're sleeping together. Yeah. I don't, I'm not that type of person, but I was like, I can't really like hold him accountable because he's not my boyfriend. Yeah. So that's fine. Let him have that. Also, he talked his way out of it. Yeah. I don't remember how, but. And that's like what manipulators do. Yeah. So I, I like understand because yeah. they always, they're always in the side of like, we're not dating. Like, yeah, she's crazy. Exactly. I didn't do anything. Exactly. Yeah. So I get um, it. But yeah. So then I think the second time it happened, that was when I was like, I'm we're like, this is With just his done. You need to get the fuck out of this house. Like, so he went and got an apartment. Um, Wait, so, and then he was sending your nudes to his ex. So and this his, yeah. happened a little later because at this point, I think he was already living in his own spot. Okay. Um, and she's the one that sent them to you being yeah. like, props to her. She no, was nice she was, for that or no? No, she was like coming at me for it. She thought it was your fault. She, um, <laughs> I don't know how much I should say about her because I've never met her, Okay, but <laughs> she was very violent in the DMs and to you. Yeah. Very like threatening. Oh me. shit. And using those pictures like maliciously. I'm going to post them. Warning. I'm going to send them. I'm going to. Not like a, hey girl, <gasps> he sent these to me. It looks like girl. you weren't aware. It was like a. You're a whore, <gasps> and now you have AIDS. <gasps> and I'm like, <laughs> you guys both need to be locked up, like institutionalized. Yeah, you straight literally jacket. both need to like. like you guys are help. actually perfect for each other. Yeah, like you guys are actually so perfect. Like, how dare I get in the way? Please have him take over his PlayStation payment. <gasps> that this big thirty year old man, like, how old are? I don't think he was 30 at the time. I think he was maybe 28 or something He like wasn't that. that much older than you. I was 24. Four years? Yeah. yeah maybe. I don't. I honestly don't know how old he is. Like, I've watched so much. The only reason why this, like, came afresh in my brain, and that's why there's so many, like, missing details, is yeah. because, like, after all of this, I was like, what? Like, get that out of my brain entirely? Yeah, you feel like it's, like, PTSD that you, like, forget details? Like, yeah. it's foggy? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wait. Side note, this is like a complete sidebar because I just had another memory. This was so funny to me. Um, we were in an argument. I don't think we were talking anymore at the time. I went to Arizona with my best friend and <clears throat> he was going off on me for I don't know what reason just to go off on me. He would, he was like the type of like, boom, 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 text Yeah, her. like, where are you? I hate you. You're a bitch. Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, and so I was like, I'm going to shut my phone off and he'll think that I blocked him. So I shut my phone off for like four minutes and I turn it back on and it's like, um, I'm going to get you. Yeah. Like, you're a C word. And because I yeah, got the good, message, yeah, good, yeah, good. Yeah, I liked it. And I was like, thank you. That's what I, all I've been wanting this whole time. Like, thank you. And he's like, that wasn't for you. <laughs> yes, it was. You thought I blocked you. Even if it wasn't. No. Crazy. Who are like, you calling? Like, crazy. Uh, like, what? You, you have nothing to offer to anybody. You literally don't even have a fucking debit card. You carry cash only, which, hmm. What does that register as? I don't know. Drug dealer, perhaps. Um, trapper. I don't know what that is, but that is not my type of man. If you don't have a debit card, am I a bank? Do I look like Chase Bank to you? Oh, my gosh. How, how long did this go on for? Um, Not long. I think maybe two months. And then the, like... I was like, run me my fucking money. Like, I know you have the money that you owe me. And then he claimed... You had, you had gave him money? Uh, the money for his PlayStation. That I was paying for it because... Well, okay. For a PlayStation? So he had like a Fortnite membership or something. Because he didn't have a debit card, he would give me cash to pay for it on this account. And then he... We stopped talking. and But my he couldn't... He wouldn't take my debit card off. And Chase Bank couldn't. 
So it was just getting racked up. So I was like, you need to bring me cash. He swore he left it in my mailbox and tried to pin it on my mom stealing it, which my mom and I have like a messy-ish relationship. So it was easy for you to believe? No, I was like, fuck you, dude. Like, okay, my mom is a lot of things, but she is not a thief and she is not going to steal money from me. Yeah. Like, but he was trying to pin it. And that's when I was like, I don't even want your fucking money. Like, that's fine. You can give it. So I just canceled my card and got a new one. And that was like the last that I ever talked to him until yesterday when he tried to add me. What's going on? Did you ever like even get to like fall in love with him or anything? Like, was it? No. It was just, like, a psycho creep, like, behind you, like, not leaving you alone? Or, like, was there ever any attachment? Because, I mean, I'm surprised, but I'm not because I've listened I've listened to so many of these stories that yeah. it's just, like... Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, sometimes, like, girls will stay because they're yeah. in love or because they're attached. Like, yeah. was this that type of situation or was he just, like, a stalker you just couldn't get rid of? Um... I definitely had, like, a bit of, I guess it would be, like, Stockholm Syndrome type thing where I felt like, dang, where did the person that I met go? Because he was so, like, fun nice at the beginning. and nice. Um, but my ex before him, like, actual boyfriend before him, set a, quite a high standard. Um, and... Although, like, towards the end, things got a little muddy, and it was not what I expected out of him. Um, I still knew his heart and, like, have seen how a good man is. And so I think that relationship taught me not to accept a relationship. Like, yeah. So, and also I was like, okay, this is just, like, fun. I knew that it was not, there was no longevity to it. Hmm. Um, Yeah, I don't know really what the hell that was. (laughs) It was a weird time, definitely, because I would never, like, there is nothing about that person that is on my, like, want list. Right, like. Except for maybe being funny, (laughs) you know? (laughs) But I think at the time it was just like, oh, this could be fun. But then it ended up just being so crazy. And even, like, now, like, my friends, my best friend, Danielle, she's the only person that really saw him as well for, like, who, who he actually he showed was. in the beginning. Okay. Um, and she loved him. Like, her mom mm, That's was another like, thing, too, oh, is, like... You guys are going to get married. Sometimes people don't understand why you stay, but, like, that person that actually, like, saw him from the beginning is, like, I, I, I understand why you did. Yeah. 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 So, I think, I mean... I would have never dealt with that. Um, I'm just not the type of girl that will deal with that. I've had enough hardships in my life. I don't need a man to add on to that. Um, So lucky for me, I didn't stick around. I wasn't like manipulated. I was just flabbergasted ultimately. Like I just had never been treated or spoken to that way. I cannot believe that people actually operate that way. I didn't know what like gaslighting was until him, even though it didn't work on me. I saw the like tactics. Like it was just like ultimately like it felt like I was discovering a new breed. Like I was like, this is like. I understand 100%. It's like, I, yeah. And also it's just like, Sometimes you try to stay and see if it's actually, like, for real. Yeah. Like, I had, I talked with this one guy, and we had, like, this two-year-long, like, type of situation where we, like, would talk for, like, two months, then we would stop talking for six months, and then another two months again. And, like, the things he would say is just, like, are you being for real? Like, yeah, maybe if I stay a little longer, like, you're going to realize that you're not okay. Like, you know, like, it's just, like... But you're not a therapist, babe. No, no, no. Like, you cannot fix him. Yeah. He doesn't want to be fixed, probably. Yeah. No, Nine no. out of ten times. They don't even know there's something to be fixed. Like, that. No. that's how they operate. Yeah. Like, it's actually like that. Do you think there's something that you had to, like, heal from after him? Definitely. There was a lot of trust issues. Um, just because I, I haven't really had any, like distrustful people in my life for the most part um I've had a lot of like really good authentic relationships I've had the same friends for basically my whole life Mm. um and so meeting somebody new and letting them in 
and then them doing that, it was like, oh, okay, like that is how people can operate. Um, and my current boyfriend, it like really affected our relationship in the beginning. Um, just because I was so afraid of how people like how do I explain this? I was afraid of the facade. Like, I didn't know yeah, if Yeah, because he person... showed he was such a good person at the mm-hmm. beginning. You don't know if your boyfriend's going to do the same yeah. thing of, like, when is he going to change? You know, exactly. like, when is he going to, like, switch up? So you're exactly. just, like, always waiting for it. Exactly. For like, literally, my current boyfriend and I, on our first date, like, um, we did a little picnic in the park. And then mm-hmm. we went and got sushi. And I left my jacket in the car. And I got up. And grabbed my jacket and got back to the table and realized that I had left my drink. And I literally didn't drink my drink because I thought that he maybe he drugged yeah. me. And even though he was a nice guy, I just thought this is just not going to last. And every time I, I literally like thought that he was going to kill me. <laughs> like, which the thing is, this previous man, like he never laid a hand on me. He was never like aggressive in those ways. Um, but. I had never been treated that way or even met a person that had that type of mind that I just assumed the worst and everybody after him. Yeah. And so that was really hard to work through. Um, I did have to go to therapy, actually, because it just ultimately really, really, like, developed into something deeper that I kind of lost control of my mind and like was having panic attacks so bad that I was like hallucinating. Wow. Um, yeah. So there was a lot to it. And I think that that being at the same time as like the world shutting down, like there was just a lot of big changes and a lot of things that I like hadn't experienced. I mean, nobody experienced Mm -hmm. like a global pandemic before. Um, so there was just a lot to digest Mm -hmm. and, now I'm okay, luckily. Good. But yeah, I mean, there's so many things that like I look back and I'm like, how, how is that even a real person? Like how? And he doesn't even think that it's wrong. Yeah, exactly. Like he's just like living and he on never his like life. reached out to apologize or anything, mm-hmm. have one more conversation. No. Yeah, I, and it makes me wonder like if I were to add him back, would there be like a what would the like opening an apology, line be? Right, yeah. I I don't think that there's any thing regret. to say. Yeah, no. I don't think that. I think you'd just be like, "What's up?" Yeah. <laughs> and I'd be like, "You're literally a fucking crazy man." Yeah, no, thank you. Like you're. Uh, we should have just been friends. That's all it ever should have been. Because and he would have probably a good been a good friend. Yeah, yeah. he would been the entertaining friend that made you laugh, and that's that. Hmm. How long have you been with your current boyfriend? Um, we started dating in 2020, like, I think it maybe was June was our first date. Um, and then we have been official now for like two years. Oh, right. You were like talking for a while and then you started. What do you think is the key and like, what is that one thing that you've like recognized about like having a healthy relationship? Oh, wow. Um, you know what? I've never had a relationship like this one. I hope that everybody in their life can experience a relationship like this one. That is so beautiful. And that is like the one thing that I've heard of. And it gives me chills because like I've just gone through like so many like different types of like relationships. And it's I've seen my friends go get into like healthy relationships. And I love that. That's the one thing they say is like, I wish everyone gets to experience it. And it makes me want it even more, you know, like, yeah, no, definitely. I mean, um, it took a lot of time to develop into what it is now. Um, like I said, I was like my panic attacks and stuff. So my first panic attack was at his house and I thought he drugged me. Um, it was a morning after some wine, maybe one or two or three bottles of wine. Mm. So I was having a little bit of anxiety and I had my daily matcha and, um he was like hey i'm gonna hop on a call really quick do you want like a like an emergency drink for like if you're not feeling well i was like yeah he made that and handed it to me and then went on his call so at the time i chugged the drink and i was lying down out on the balcony and i was just like you know chilling trying to like 
find my bearings and um I started hallucinating and then I how is that yeah it was terrifying because I have like done hallucinogenics in my previous like young adult years yeah so I couldn't comprehend what was going on um I went to the bathroom immediately. I, it made me sick to my stomach because I was like, what the hell is going on? And so I went to the bathroom to go throw up and I looked in the mirror and I didn't recognize myself <gasps> at all. Um, and I walked out and he was in the living room, like on the phone and I like gripped his hand and I was like, I, like, hello, like I'm not okay. And he's still on the phone. You know, it's a business call. He's like very business orientated. And so... Yeah, I don't know. Um, I thought he drugged me. And I got in his shower and he I made him stand there and watch me shower because I didn't trust him, but I needed the shower apparently. And then I went in without a towel, just went and laid in his bed soaking wet after the shower and I was talking to him apparently. I don't really remember this. I think I kind of blocked it out, but he said that it looked like I was like looking right through him when I was talking to him and I kept asking him like what did you give me and he was like I didn't give you anything and he also had the reservations of I'm still a new person in his life he didn't know if I was crazy he didn't know how to digest the situation um and after that I had a friend come pick me up because I couldn't drive because I had no idea what was going on and, and you told us they like that was a panic attack like what what was that yeah so we kind of came to the consensus like you cannot be focusing on anything but yourself right now re referring to me and so we stopped dating and I went to therapy and I was in so many workshops about panic and panic disorder and derealization depersonalization so many things that I is didn't that what it is like do wow yeah it's terrifying and I mean luckily now like do you understand the root of that um after going to therapy not the root I, I I've had a really tough upbringing um I mean everybody says that everybody has their own story for me I have a lot of resentment and yeah. like confusion yeah. and I think that there was a lot that I had internally that I never worked through that I kind of numbed myself to feeling anything and so when you don't feel anything or when you block everything out your body still feels it and I think that I just hit a breaking point Like you were just storing it. so much and you were like choosing not to feel it that you, like your body just feels it for you. Yeah. I think that maybe that was. It makes a lot of sense. The the tip of the iceberg. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I went through, you know, extensive therapy and had to work on myself a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, like an exhausting amount. But I mean, I'm the only person that I have ultimately. Um And so after all those things, I was like, I'm still thinking about that guy. Like we were still, you know, in contact here and there, but I like loved him. Like I knew I loved him. And so I was like, hey, I'm going to this party tonight in L.A. Like you should come. And he came. And then the rest Aww. is history. But yeah, I would have never been able to have this relationship if I didn't go through the ugliest parts but, with him. And he's like just he was so patient with you and understanding of like, okay, you can't take care of yourself. And then yeah. when the time is right, do yeah. you believe in right person, wrong time? No, me either. I don't, I, I believe in right person, right time, right person, right time. I believe in, um, wrong person, right time as well, which that's kind of backwards. Really? Because I feel like Every single person just teaches you something. And it, it that, and that's why. Yeah. That's why. So I think for me, like wrong person, right time is like the positive way of looking at people that have fucked you. Hmm. Like it was the wrong person, but it was the right time to learn that lesson. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, because same as you, I do look at people as lessons, like respectfully. Yeah. I think that there's no way to grow if you aren't being challenged. Challenged or 
praised maybe or respected or yeah. loved or even like you know just yeah the, people can teach you the good and the bad about yourself definitely so, yeah. and i'm appreciative of all those moments like they're tough they can be really hard and it can make you like really hate yourself or doubt yourself or you can or you can grow from it like mm. there's two ways that you can kind of go about it and I've picked both routes in my life and I know which one is easier and I know mm. which one I like better now and I choose to grow mm. from these things now mm. and I didn't always used to do that you know um but I'm do you think that was after like therapy that made you realize of like mm. yeah I choose growth I think that this has been uh, in the past year that I've made this decision for myself. So no, not from therapy. Um, I think it was starting to um, learn how to set boundaries for myself. And I, I feel I've always been the friend that people go to when they need advice or when they're down or any circumstance really, because one of my friends told me the reason why everyone comes to me is because I have been through so much more than everybody else and they still see how strong I am. Mind you, that not that might not be the truth. I might not be as strong as I'm perceived, yeah. but that's how they perceive, perceive me. You. And so people come to me expecting me to have the advice and all these things the and but I hold on to them I hold on to everything that somebody comes to me with and it was weighing me down and it was exhausting and so this year I was like I need to set some boundaries and I can't be I'm not anyone's emotional punching bag I yeah. can't be carrying other people's shit like I have my traumas to work through I can't be exactly and so this is a recent thing and we'll see if it sticks i'm i'm hoping it does but yeah i'm just not i don't have the mental capacity anymore i need to learn how to prioritize myself and grow and i haven't for a long time have so. you after you know just deciding that you want to start setting boundaries and like i, I just can't keep carrying anyone shit anymore have you noticed this pattern of like losing relationships after making that decision um, you know what? I think the people that are in my life are majority. I would say 98% of the people in my life, I think will be in my life for the rest of my life. I've had these friends. <laughs> majority. Yeah. That other 2%, good luck. <laughs> yeah, well, because, you know, there is some yeah. where... I am starting to see like no, paths sure. aren't aligning and I am not going to hoard friends that aren't healthy for mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, m my best friend Ralph, I've known since third grade. Mm. Uh, my other best friend, Danielle, I met her briefly after family friends. So maybe around fifth grade. And then we officially met in our freshman year of high school, like all of my friends have been for like over 10 years. And so I know these people, I don't think that I will lose them by setting boundaries. Um, I think it's more so like, yeah, girl, no worries. Thank you for still being there for me. Cause I will still be there for you. Mm -hmm. But to an extent, if it's hurting me, then I'm going to have to shut it yeah. down. But yeah, I, I don't think Luckily, the people that I have decided to involve myself with, I don't think I'll lose any relationships from mm. setting boundaries. And also letting people know that, like, the more that you work on yourself and the more that you, like, choose to grow, yeah, I feel like the more people that you're going to start losing, just because that's when you realize that some people just have you there to, yeah. you know, put the all of their traumas on you and then, okay, I'm better, let me leave. Yeah. And then when you, you set those boundaries, it's like... Why can't I tell you yeah. what's going on in my life anymore? Like, who else am I supposed to? Yeah, who's going to carry my baggage for yeah. me? And it's like, no, I have my baggage too. Like, so what the fuck are you talking about, yeah. girl? Like, my baggage is 8,000 pounds. Yeah, and which is really good that you have, like, healthy people that you understand that are going to be understanding of, you know, yeah. the things that you're going through. But then 
a lot of people that listen is like, how do I know if I should cut my friends off? Or how do, well, first yeah. of all, if you're questioning it, then that's, that's sign enough yeah. that you have to like let them go. Exactly that. But I feel like it's super important to have like healthy people that are, are vibrating in that like same frequency as you are that are choosing to grow and yeah. you know, that are, so. Before I jump into my last question yes. that I ask everybody that comes and I miss me, I want to give you a little gift that wasn't planned for you, but I think it's meant for you. So <laughs> um, I have a clothing brand that we were talking about it off camera, but my message with it is just basically that we're all strangers healing together. And mm -hmm. I didn't know you an hour ago. And now I know that you went through this <laughs> traumatic experience that I'm never going to forgive chat for. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Chad. But yeah, my, my message with the brand is just basically that we're all strangers healing together. And so just like be nice and be understanding with everybody that you have around you because you never know what what people are going through. So this is yeah, for you. Thanks. Okay, so, so cute. Thank Wait, you so this. much. Thank you. Yeah, now that you have it on. Yeah. Um, what does healing mean to you? Oh, God. What does healing mean to me? Um, I think prioritizing yourself and finding comfort in knowing that the things that you went through aren't okay. Um, but not sitting in it anymore. Kind of just being able to move on and understand that it was a part of the process and necessary and beneficial for your development. I think ultimately at the end of the day, I am confident in who I am and how I process things and how I, you know, just look at life and treat people and I wouldn't be able to do those things if I didn't sit in the bad and heal from mm -hmm. it. So healing is just, to me, developing myself further. Hmm. You have a stranger in front of you that is about to go through all of the things that you went through. What would be your biggest advice for a stranger? Your parents are still learning too. Wow. Yeah, I think just realizing that this is their first time doing it as well. Um, but hold them accountable. <laughs> or they're just going to fail at it. <laughs> yeah. They're still learning too. I love that. Yeah. I love that. That is so healing. Yeah. And so true. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here. There Thanks was not a plan, but I loved it. I, I loved it. Was it was so funny. Thank you guys so much for watching. Where can people find you? Well, your Instagram is disabled right now, but uh, yeah. where can people find you? Um, I just made a new Instagram, but I, I don't really care to have people there. Yeah. Um, if you want to join, it's supposed to be anonymous, but hmm. my faceless journey, um, it is on Instagram and TikTok as the Cozy Anonymous Club. If you want to come get cozy with me, we're learning how to find comfort outside of our comfort zone. So I love that. come join me. I love that. Thank yeah. you guys so much for watching and listening. Don't forget to follow me on social media at Mafiansures. Don't forget to follow I Miss Me on social media at I Miss Me Podcast everywhere. And don't forget to go get your no name hoodie to no name project CEO. I love you guys. I will see you guys on our next episode. And don't forget that we're all strangers healing together with love, Mafi. Mm -hmm.